Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem from the 2001 IMO shortlist, problem number C4. This is also a problem in Pranav Sridham's Olympiad Combinatoric chapter 1 on algorithms. Now that's a hint here. But, and I suggest you try to spam out for a minimum of 15 minutes. Ideally, actually, I would ideally try it for 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Not more than two hours, not, like, not more than two and a half hours to be precise. And if on the other hand you'd like to go along, let's take 15 minutes and you'll put your first ideas out on paper. See if you come up with any heuristics. And this is just how I wrote down the problem on the board. Namely, if x, y, z such that x is less than y is less than z and such that z minus y and y minus x is uh, 1776 in 2001 in some order is historic, this set of x, y, and z. Prove that we can partition the natural numbers into disjoint historic sets. So now without further ado, let's begin. So the first sort of order of business is to figure out, okay, what is this? Okay, is, are these two numbers important? Here's the, the context for this shortlist is, this was the 2001 IMO shortlist. It was held in the US. This is, I think, an important day in US history. So let's just call these numbers A and B for now. And maybe there is some reason, maybe their GCD is something interesting, something nice. Maybe it's the fact this one's divisible by three and this one is also divisible by three. Maybe that's important. And there's three of X, Y, Z. Maybe, we don't know. But let's look at this more in general, just so I don't have to calculate what precisely every single one of these numbers is. So what is X, Y, and Z? Well, let's say X, if y minus x is a and z minus y is b, then we'll have the set is either x, x plus a, and x plus a plus b. Or if it's the other way around, it's going to be x, x plus b, and x plus a plus b. Okay, so if we have an x, we immediately know what z is. The only question is like, what is y going to be? And here we have the difference is b here is greater than a. This is what we know about them. So now let's think about it. The thing is true that we can cover this. So the idea is, first and foremost, how would you sort of construct this? Uh, and I'd actually take you know, two minutes, just think briefly. How would you construct this sort of partition? How would you add numbers to it? And the answer for me is I would think of this as a process where I'm adding one number after another after another. And I personally would like to start at the smallest number possible and then go to the next number which hasn't yet been put in the set. And then the next one that hasn't, and then the next one that hasn't. But I always go from the smallest numbers. Why? If I was to say start off from, south, from say, let's say I start off from x being equal to a thousand. And then I filled up all the numbers still 3,000, right? Say I did this. Now, if I was to do this, and then I'm like, oh yeah, but I also want to you know, go back to one. I could not do anything with this then. I would not be able to find x plus a or x plus b for one. Right, so I would not be able to partition it. So it makes sense to start off with the smallest numbers first and then move on to the biggest. And with that, I invite you, with that idea, I invite you to take another five minutes and figure out what will be the next step. And here's what it is for me. So now that we have, we're gonna start from the smallest numbers and move our way up. Let's see when will we run into a problem. Say that we have covered, that we run into a problem with some number, call this number cap, call this number C. We ran into a problem with C, all the other numbers before C were fine. And let's see what happens. Well, C plus A plus B isn't where the problem is because this is the biggest one so far and we haven't even, we aren't able to cover it, right? So this is not where the problem is. So the problem is that both C plus A and C plus B are already covered previously. Okay. So what does it mean if C plus A is covered previously? And note, C is not. Well, and what does it mean for C plus B? Well, for C plus B, 
Now the question is like, what was our x for c plus b? And maybe these are two different sorts of sets. Let's call this one. So this one is smaller than this one, right? This has the y that's smaller than this y. So this is going to be, say, small, and this is going to be big. Like big y, small y set, big y set. And now with this, c plus b, if it could it be x plus b? The answer is no. If it was x plus b for some x, then we would have x needs to be c. That's not the case. If it was x plus a for some x, we would have x would be c plus b minus a. It would be somewhere here. Again, it's not the case. So this needs to be x plus a plus b, and it has to be a small set, right? So this one has to be small for set x is equal for x equals to c plus x we see plus b minus a minus b. So this is for c minus a. So it was a small. Okay, right? It cannot be a big. It was a small one. Now what about c plus a? Well, c plus a, it could it be x plus it can't be x plus a. So it could be x plus b, it could be a big set. And what happens if it's x plus b? So we know this one is small, right? And now what happens if this is x plus b? Then we know that x here is equal to c plus a minus b. So it could be this and it could be big here. Or if it's x plus a plus b, I mean, it has to be big either way. If it's x plus a minus b, then it's for x equals c minus b, it's big. So it's big in either one of these two, right? If I'm not mistaken, here we will have a plus, for x is c plus a plus b big. We have c plus a, c plus a minus b is somewhere here. And now, okay, we have this sort of thing. Now, with this sort of in mind, this is where we run into a problem. We have not yet defined how we are going to be making these sets, right? How we're going to cover, like, are you going to take the small one or the big one? And here's where I would invite you to pause for 10 minutes or so and see if you can come up with something. How would you avoid this issue? Sort of by construction, right? How can you avoid this thing from happening? That we had a small, for c plus b and a big for c plus a and that's where our problem was with x either c minus b or c plus a minus b that we used a big set for both of these and maybe it's also important to you do the ordering so this is c minus so this is c plus a minus b so that's going to be like somewhere here c plus a minus b then this is c plus a it's going to be right here, C minus A, and then C minus B is the first one, right? This is the first one's going to be either this, this, or this. And now with that, I invite you to pause for 10 minutes and try to figure out what is your sort of next idea, next step? How would you maybe define a construction to handle this case? Pause now, and here's the next step. So we've actually like had an error, like here we actually used a small, not a big one for x is equal to c minus b. We don't have c plus a because we used a small one. We didn't use it. If we had used a big one, we would have covered c, but we haven't covered c, c, so we used a big one. And in this case, we would use, what's it called? In this case, we would have used a big one. So this one is big. This one is small, and this one over here, x is equal to c minus a, was also a big set. Now, the trouble is, mind you, we're looking at these smallest integers, these smallest numbers are where we get these issues. But if we were sort of to prioritize, when we have smaller numbers, for x is equal to c minus a, we had, we had that c, because we used a big here, we had that c minus a, and c minus a plus b, c minus a plus b, which is over here. 
and we had that C plus B were all uncovered, like we're all not covered, not in any set. However, we could have used C minus A, C, and C plus B as our, as our covering. We could have covered C previously. So here it makes sense to, can we get around this in any way, shape, or form? And the answer is yes, we can just, at every single step of the way, try to just prioritize like, hey, if we can use the small set on a number, let's use it. If not, if we can't use a small set, then let's use a big set. And now we need to prove, now let's try to prove that we won't run into this sort of issue here again. And I invite you to take five, ten minutes and try to prove that. Wrap these ideas up and prove this sort of thing. And here's the next step. So again, let's assume the contrary, that we were stuck at C. Okay, so that means that both C plus A and C plus B are co were covered previously. So let's look at C plus B. C plus B had to be covered by a big set, which means that X in that big set was equal to C minus A. However, by our sort of covering rule, we would have covered C when we ran into C minus A because C wasn't covered, because we could have used a small set and we didn't. So because we will always use a small set in this case, we then know that we will be able to cover every single one of these sets. And this is sort of an algorithmic type of problem. You know, you pick the smallest thing, like you're just trying to, this is called sort of a greedy approach. You're just trying to do the best thing at every single move, the best possible thing at every single move. That's your heuristic. And here the heuristic is, you know, let's get the smallest numbers out of the way and let's get the most of them out of the way. And here we figured that out using some sort of a backwards thinking like, okay, if I, if I was just like, you know, plugging in randomly small and big numbers and I ran into a problem, what would that problem look like? And then the next question is, okay, so that's my problem. How can I solve it? How can I solve it quickly? And then you're thinking, huh, okay, it's better if I have more small numbers at the beginning covered because that gives me a lot more space later. And that's how we get it gets to this sort of solution. It's a nice little problem. It's a difficult problem, mind you. It's a C4 at the IMO shortlist from 2001. There were less than 10 combinatorics problems at that shortlist. It's a difficult problem, but it's a good one, you know, to practice this sort of thinking algorithmically. And with that, this finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.